Good morning. How are you guys doing today? We are finishing up the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and 16 today. And what a fitting passage after celebrating Easter. We think about the resurrection and that our Savior has risen from the dead. I think sometimes in our culture, we can kind of think of things like rising from the dead kind of as being kind of weird, <laughs> right? Because why, why would someone want to rise from the dead? And, you know, this sounds kind of, oh, I don't know, weird. But when we think about the fact that we were given death through the first Adam, curses through the first Adam, and scripture here today we read about the second Adam, Jesus Christ, who came to give us life. And the only way he could do that was God came in the flesh, to die our death that we deserved and be risen again. Good morning, Vilya, and hey, Shannon, good to see you guys. So we're here in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and Paul discusses the resurrection for all in chapter 15. And one of the reasons he did this was false doctrine. So we're gonna hit on some of that today. Back then they had the Gnostics and they had, believe it or not, Right there at the beginning of the church, they had false doctrine. Some people did not believe in the resurrection. And to not believe in the resurrection, this is fundamental to foundational, whatever word you want to use, to what we believe. If we don't believe that Christ rose from the dead, then what are we doing? Right? Good morning, Diane. Hey, guys. So... Correct doctrine is essential, especially as concerns the resurrection, because as Paul says so beautifully, we have no hope if we don't have the hope that our Savior has risen. There's a phrase that I've heard, maybe you've heard it before too, the Sadducees are sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. <laughs> so Paul presents the facts of the resurrection in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians uh, through 1 through 11 that Jesus appeared to his disciples, that Jesus appeared to the 500. And then uh, Paul gives seven results if people deny the resurrection. And this I got from a commentary this morning. Good morning, Monica. In verses 13 and 16, God, ha if he has not raised Christ, death and hate will have defeated life and love. Death and hate. I mean, uh, verse 14, those who preach the resurrection are wasting their time. This is if we don't believe in resurrection. And also in verse 14, those who have trusted in Christ will be disappointed. He said that he was the truth. What he said would all have been a lie. Verse 15, some people have preached that God raised Jesus. Those people are giving false ideas about God. They are breaking the law about false witnesses. This is if... Again, for those who are just coming in, if we don't believe in the resurrection. Verse 15, God will punish Christians for their sins. God has not forgiven them if the resurrection isn't true. Verse 18, those who have died as believers in Christ have no future. And then verse 19, if Jesus has not risen from the death, from death, his promises about the future eternal life make no sense. We have no hope for the future. Other people should pity Christians because Christians believe someone who could not keep his promises. Well, aren't you glad that we've got proof and that we know our Savior rose from the dead? And we can look at all of Scripture together and we can see in Isaiah 53, we can see prophecy after prophecy fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And his purpose was very clear to pay a debt we could never pay. And so we see that the wages of sin is death in Romans 6, 23. We see that no one is good in Romans 3, 10 and 23. That all have fallen short of the glory of God. And so we needed a Savior who could pay our debt and then rise from the dead and defeat death. Amen? Death no longer has any sting. We see that famous verse here in 1 Corinthians 15. From another commentary I read this morning, the reason that Paul was writing about the resurrection is in verse 12. Some Christians were saying that there is no resurrection from the dead. Christians were saying that. 
You see, the enemy comes to steal away the truth that we finally believe. If he can get us to believe a lie, we will live fruitless lives here on earth. So the same deceiver back then is still deceiving us today. You know, this is why we have to be people in God's word. You know, they may have denied this vital part of the gospel for any of the following reasons. Back then, the Greeks believed that the soul is in the body. It is as if it is in prison. This world is only like a shadow. Death sets the soul free to live in the real world. So these are, there's all sorts of cultural, like pagan beliefs back then and today. We're going to hit on some of the ones today in just a minute. Back then, some Christians believed that the resurrection had already happened. At baptism, they had received every blessing they needed. They did not look forward to a resurrection of the body. And in another letter, Paul mentions Hymenaeus and Philetus, who had this false idea, 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18. Also, some Jews may have tried to explain the empty grave, right? We do know that they tried to make up some lies about that. You know, someone stole the body, make up something quick. And this may have tested a person's belief in the resurrection of Jesus. Paul dealt with these beliefs. He wrote about the facts about the resurrection in verses 1 through 11. Then he gave the serious results if people deny the resurrection in verses 12 through 19. He then shows the results of people believe in the resurrection of Jesus. He shows the results for the future and in the present in verses 20 through 34. So in Paul's day, there were Gnostics and false religions just like we have today. I was looking up Gnostics today because I've studied it some in my studies at Liberty, but I thought, is there one brief statement of what Gnostics are? Well, Gnostics believe that the story of creation found in the Bible was a lie. Okay, so they ain't believe in the resurrection and they're also not believing in the creation, right? We just appeared here, <laughs> I guess but that God wasn't actually the one responsible for the creation of the world, at least not directly. They claim the evidence of this comes from the imperfection, tragedy, and evil in our world. A good God could never have created it. Wow, guys, we have to be in our words so we know the truth. The truth sets people free. You know, if we think about even our creation, people talk about, um, you know, it came from an explosion, whatever. Look at, look around you. Uh, it says in Romans 1, 16 through 32, that the wrath of God is being revealed against people who deny what they see, what we can see, that obviously there's a creator. And so uh, the same thing with resurrection, you know, uh, people can deny things. But those who've received the Holy Spirit, those who've read God's word, you know, we may not have been eyewitnesses in that day and age, but there were 500 other eyewitnesses who also saw Christ rise from the dead. And we live that reality in our faith. Good morning, Henry and Susan. Yes, Diane, it is sad. All right, so now we're talking about the Gnostics, but it was interesting uh, in my translation I'm reading this year, the CSB, I read a different translation every year. Uh, actually, I read it for one of my different kids every year. I'm like, this year, this is Daniel's turn, and I highlight, and Lord willing, make notes in there and hand it over to him. But I thought the CSB would be an interesting translation. And in this one, it talks about, right here in 1 Corinthians 15, two different scripture passages that are used, one by the Jehovah Witnesses today and one by the Mormons, misinterpreted. And so we have to be... Um, Fighting for the good faith, right? And, and I think a lot of times people will fight over doctrine and it, it's pointless, it's trivial matters, but the resurrection is not a trivial matter. And we need to know what we believe and why we believe it. So 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8, 14 through 18 and 19, this is from a commentary in my Bible. These verses refute the Jehovah Witnesses doctrine that Jesus was raised from the dead as a spirit. The Apostle Paul clearly declared that without a bodily resurrection of Jesus, there is no gospel, no hope for eternal life, and no meaning in the present life. When appearing to the disciples who were terrified, thinking they were seeing a ghost, Jesus assured them a ghost does not have flesh and bones 
as you can see, I have, verse 39. I want to say the word boom after that. Boom. <laughs> Just kidding. But you know, this is truth. And so we have to know what we believe and why we believe it. And I, I will tell you, even reading today, there's some verses I don't totally un understand. I don't have it all together. I'm just going to continue seeking and all the more understanding what God is saying here. There's also, um, as concerns the Mormons, and this is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uses this verse as a foundation for their practice of baptism for the dead. In their temples, Latter-day Saints practice baptism for the dead due to their belief that the dead have additional opportunities for accepting the message of Mormonism. And because baptism is necessary for salvation, living peoples are baptized, etc., etc. Well, the good news is baptism isn't necessary for salvation. Christ said it's merely that we believe and we'll be saved, you know. Um, and so that seems, that's hard for some people to hear because we think we have to do a bunch of good works. But our good works are as filthy rags, it says in the Bible. And so we can't ever achieve this gift of salvation. Nothing we could do could ever achieve it. We simply have to place our faith in Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, who paid our sin debt completely. And this baptism for the dead, um, they basically thought, hey, this person died. We don't know if they believed everything. Let's baptism someone else as a substitution for them. Man, you know, we've got, <laughs> we can make up stuff all day long, right? But it is only God's word that stands, not man's little religion, fake religions, and uh, adding to or subtracting from scripture is a big no-no. Uh, go check that out in Proverbs 3 and some other places as well. So anyway, that's just some things that I got from 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 16, Paul is describing uh, him going, um, I guess I can take off my glasses now, <laughs> uh, him going on to his next travel as he is departing Corinth again. So I think some application, at least for me, is the key here is that we need to study God's word to know what we believe. You know, when I was first saved, I was... I mean, pretty naive, still I am in so many ways, but I basically was like, God, just tell me what to believe and I'll do it, just tell me what to do. I had yet to learn that this uh, faith in Jesus Christ is a relationship, you know, and so we're gonna be in finding this world, just as they found right there at the beginning of the church, that there are people who are going to add or subtract from God's word. There are people who are going to twist scripture. We have to be uh, a workman approved as it talks about in 1 Timothy. We need to study God's word so we can rightly defend it, not just to be argumentative. We don't want to be argumentative. We seek to know the truth so we can set people free. Uh, sometimes people want to just have arguments about minutia. Let's keep the major thing the major thing, right? Correct doctrine matters. Not for Christians to be argumentative with one another, but that we would encourage one another in truth. Finally, the scripture of the day is out of 1 Corinthians 15, verses 45 through 49. And this is the New Living Translation, the version I read from last year when I was planning this whole Bible reading plan. The scripture tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Guys, Adam brought the curse in death. Horrible consequences our way. We were made in the image of God, and then sin corrupted all of that. And we have to fight sin every day. So here's the difficult thing Paul talked about. We still have this old man. We're still in this jars of clay, if you will. But we carry the presence of God. <laughs> we carry God's truth but we will have to resist sin. But Jesus brought us forgiveness and new life and healing 
And now we're being sanctified for one day we will fully be like him. And that's what verse 49 says. Hey, oh, thanks, Diane. Diane's sharing that other one. I knew it was in Revelation. I didn't know where <laughs> about not adding or subtracting to God's word. Uh, so Revelation 22, you guys can check that out. And uh, I think any time, um, have you guys noticed sometimes a, a, a trend where different denominations will kind of think they've got, they own the truth. But you know, the good news is it's Christians who have the truth and it's the word of God. And we've, may we be people of God's word. His word is precious. And someone was saying to me uh, yesterday, well, I read the Bible, check mark. I read it through all the way, done. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, oh. We've got to be in God's word every day, not because it's a good girl or a good guy thing to do, but because it's our very life. We need to know God more, uh, and it gives us strength to live this life well. You guys, uh, go with God. Thank you for being here, and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.